guys, I'm Sherry Comanche today. Ray Shadow Legends, welcome to the video, guys. How are y'all doing? How's your summer going? Mine's going, mine's going great. Mine goes, I can't complain, right? Everybody's healthy, uh, relatively happy, very hot. Uh, it feels like July just flew by. Sp trying to spend as much time as I can with the kiddo before he goes to big boy school in just a month away. Uh, wow, this flew by for me at least. I mean, we're just here in August still, but so I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. But anyway, hopefully you guys are remaining, you know, happy. And, and, and safe and healthy uh, as well. Uh, guys, I have been remiss. I have been, uh, like, I should be shamed. Uh, I should be dragged in to the town center next to the forge and, uh, I don't know, uh, slapped upside the head. Get out. I have been sleeping on a champion, an epic champion. This is the beauty of the game, right? It's the beauty is that when there's a billion champions in the game, literally, I counted, there's one billion. Correct. Absolutely 100% factual. When there's a billion champions in this game, guys, uh, you kind of discover hidden gems. And you know what? Like, uh, let me give an example that's not the subject of today's video. I haven't even invested in him. I have not. I maxed him, but I've never even put gear on him. You ever do that to a champion? You ever invest and rank them up maybe during a clan versus clan if you're anything like me? And you're like, okay, I'll get to you eventually. And then you look like six months later and they're still sitting there. Anax is a champion like that for me. This is, again, not the champion of today's video, but I hear amazing things about him, and I've just never really, I've never used him, right? Same thing, another one. I have a few of these, right? Like, guys who I know are well thought of, champions, uh, by by you guys, but I've never done anything with them. Another one is Aox the Rememberer, right? I, I've never, like, played around with him at all. And another one was... Why would you leave? I guess I have something against lizard men. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. What can I say? I, I apologize to all the lizard men watching from home. Venomage. That is the subject of today's video. Dude, in this, in this build I'm going to show you guys, forget about it, man. This is a champion that I challenge you guys. If you have Venomage, uh, I don't know. Like, I read the kit, and I'm like, okay, like a pretty solid kit. But I'm not blown away by it. And then... When I put her into, yeah, it's a her. I did some re a lot of research on that. These lizard men, very tough, very tough, or or lizard women. No offense, but how? I, let me just get away from the gender conversation. How about that? Uh, it's a female, I think. <laughs> but anyway, you read the kit, and you're not. At least me, I wasn't blown away. But boy, massive impact wherever I try this champion, guys. In this build, uh, really excited to share. And can you tell I'm, I'm I'm feeling good today, guys? Love, positive vibes your way, especially if you need it out there, right? Uh, Two-time hitter destroying targets max HP by 75% of the damage inflicted if they're under a heal reduction, which we do have on the A3. More on that in a moment. Uh, but this is great for Scarab King. It doesn't deal a ton of damage, but it deals enough to be super viable to take out down that enemy max HP of the Scarab King if you don't have like your Euros to Soul Cage, right? Uh, the multiplier is a 2.4 on the A1 and a 6 on the A2 and a 4 on the AoE on the A3. Granted, the base attack isn't that crazy at 1,000, so we're not looking at tons of damage, but way more than you'd expect. But real, what really helps, obviously, is that each hit out of the two hits has a 50% chance to win book. Definitely worth booking this champion. I would say it's pretty damn close to mandatory if you really want to get in the bang for your buck, right? Uh, getting this up to a 50% chance on the two poisons is going to be amazing. Also noteworthy that the Sniper Mastery will bump this up to a 55% chance. We mentioned this on the channel before. I think in one of the uh, Secrets Plarium Doesn't Want You To Know uh, videos. Really, really good ability, obviously, right? That instant activation uh, gonna be a kind of count for, for a lot of the damage that Venomage is gonna bring to the table. Uh, more on the A1 in a bit because it has it definitely pertains to the build that we're going to be using to really extrapolate the most damage out of this champion. Neurotoxin on the A2 three turn cooldown wind to 100% chance to play decreased defense, big version, and a decreased attack for two turns on targets under poison. I mean, I'm going to state the obvious here. Amazing for clan boss, amazing for any boss, right? We've got a decreased defense and a decreased attack, big versions on a three turn cooldown, right? That is a big boy or girl or lizard don't be so hard on yourself on the a3 aoe flesh melter venom uh three turn cooldown again attacks all enemies we get a heal reduction 100 percent 100 percent land rate 100 percent heal reduction for three turns on a three turn cooldown that's great right that's it's, it's a really good ability also has 100 percent chance of placing two poisons on the target for two turns on a three turn cooldown ergo that will activate the decrease attack and give poisons to activate on the a1 as well and then pain right 
life. Enemies under heal reduction uh, debuffs inflict 15% less damage, which is nice because we have that on an AoE. Heck, you can even use this champion, believe it or not. Oh, well, I guess, why wouldn't you believe it, right? You can use this champion even in Hydra. She'll put out a sneaky amount of damage, A. In B, you'll get the uh, the damage mitigation as long as they're under heal reduction, which again, on a three turn cooldown, if you can keep the, uh, the the provoke up, you should be looking pretty good for a damage mitigator and a little bit of sneaky damage. Is it an S tier, you know, Hydra champion? No, but certainly S tier when it comes to clan boss, right? And so many other areas in the game. We have accuracy in all battles by 45. Let me show you guys show you the build, and then I want to take Venomage into battle. Man, I'm passionate about my Venomage. How can I sleep on this champion for so long, man? So many of you guys, too. So many of you guys in the comments. Uh, where's the Venomage guy at? Where's the guy on Venomage? She's nasty in a ring. I don't know who she's talking about, but uh, asking for Ian, asking for Venomage. We have more Venomage. Day five asking for Venomage. Poor Ian. Oh, it looks like it's Ian. Ian. This one's this one goes out to you, Ian. I don't think you've ever done a guide on Venomage. I pulled her. Uh, there's not a lot of content out there for creators like yourself. It's builds and 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 Rob. Shout out Venomage, Venomage. Ian back at it again. Ian, where's the Venomage guide? Blaster looking for a Venomage uh, or a lure guide. Okay, I made my point. A lot of people looking for Venomage content out there. Is it weird that I dream about you? I think I better go. Okay. This is the build, guys. It's the double or triple if you want to retaliation. Ooh 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 ooh. When retaliation. Retaliation became a two set piece. I love it because then you can kind of mix max ma mix match excuse me uh perception gear retaliation gear on this champion i could run two perceptions one retaliation three retaliations if i had enough accuracy uh or just three perceptions if i was struggling to find that accuracy but i love retaliation now guys a two-piece set not a four-piece 30 percent chance to counterattack. thus uh 30 percent chance to counterattack with a two-time hitter activating two poisons right really good against scarab king obviously more counterattacks, more reduction of enemy max hp i really really enjoy retaliation on Venomage, right? All those extra poison activations, a lot of damage. You guys will see what I'm talking about in a moment. So I think that Perception and Retaliation are the way to go on this champion, but there's several ways to build her. You could actually even build her uh, really tanky if you wanted to. You don't need to worry so much about crit rate. We have it here. You know, it's nice to have if you want to min-max her damage, but it's not mandatory on this champion. You don't have to stress out about getting a bunch of crit rate and crit damage. But uh, the cool thing is, is is you could build like super tanky, take off the crit rate on the, the gauntlets here, and put her in guardian gear for an old school poison clan boss team. Get some heals and stuff like that. It's not necessarily the most ideal candidate. I'm just saying is, no matter where you're using this champion, you can build something that will really suit the team around her. Anyway, I digress. I love retaliation and perception can you tell we have hp some survivability on the on the chest you can go defense as well they both scale pretty well in terms of the base numbers 1156 is not bad for a defense based champion it's not amazing but it's it's not bad for a support we have speed on the boots we're looking for accuracy substats let me glyph this out i think i have a lot of glyphs lately I don't know. I don't know about you guys, but what I do is, is I tend to be either feast or famine when it comes to glyphs, right? Either I happen to be in a mood where I'm upgrading a lot of champions, a lot of artifacts, uh, or I'll just go like in a little bit of a drought like I am right now. And I'm like, look at this. I am glyph loaded. And then it always seems similar to uh, ascending, similar to like sand devil oil and stuff. It always seems like I'm loaded. And then literally like two seconds later, I'm like, oh man, I'm broke. I need to farm sand devil overnight. Crap. Anyway, uh, survivability. I did go crit rate, as I as I mentioned earlier, on the gauntlets. Uh, so building for a little bit of damage on this Venomage. We have resistance on the banner. Oh, excuse me. We have accuracy on the banner. I had resistance. I switched it off. We have accuracy on the banner. We have defense and HP on the ring and the amulet. You know what? I think with these stats where we're going to use her... We could probably keep her alive going with a little bit of damage. Again, I want to be clear here. We're not looking at like a big time nuker or anything crazy like that. But as long as we're keeping, and this goes for any support champion, right? As long as we're keeping them alive and the team has 100% success rate, Let's go ahead and try to get a little bit more damage out of them, right? We have Phantom Touch on the A1. Of course, with this a champion, it also bumps up the attack, which is nice. The attacks are based on, on the attack stat on Venomage. Uh... You can go Dark Resolve to prevent her from being uh, CC'd. We could go even with uh, with Cruelty, decreasing target's defense if we wanted to. We could go with Commanding Presence. Uh, we could even go with Indomitable Spirit. Uh, so there's a few different options for uh, Venomage. I like Phantom Touch for a little bit extra damage out of the A or out of anything, right? Uh, we have 
offense and support, keeping it super basic, super simple in terms of the masteries on this champion. Man, this is like absolute shock here. We got offense, hug on the left hand side, boom, war master. Support, boom, going down, picking up master hexer, picking up sniper uh, for obvious reasons. Lore of steel as well for the perception. And that's about it. Guys, I'm excited to go ahead and just jump into battle here. I think we've done a, a pretty good job giving a fairly robust guide. Let's start out in Dragon. The only area that she's amazing that I'm not going to show you in today's video is going to be Clan Boss because I don't have a team built around her, but the synergies are obvious. Decreased defense, decreased attack, uh, uh, poisons, and instant activation. It's just in the damage mitigation too. Really one of the best epics in the game for Clan Boss if you build the correct team around her. Great poison champion. All right, let's go. I think I have stage five here. We are magic affinity, so let's go into a strong affinity matchup. And I put some of my faves in here. I put Artak for kind of a damage uh, comparison. I have Sil the Drakes. Yeah, we love you, Sil. We love you. If I could kill it, I would. But I legally can't. But I've considered it. We have Relic Tender, and we have, uh, I'm really getting into my Ciliac Priest Orn lately. An AoE here with two poisons, poison sensitivity. The idea here is to have another poison champion on the team to help kind of, you know, parlay those poison damage, that poison activation with Venomage. So these waves will take a moment or two. This is where Artak, this is why Artak's on the team. We don't have an AoE debuffer on this squad, and this is a hard dungeon, hard five. Uh, so these mobs are level 350. They have a ton of HP. We do have two single target revivers on the team in Relic Tender and Soul of the Drakes. Because odds are, especially Relic odds are she might die, but we really want that cleanser for the dragon. So I'll tell you what, guys, you guys can see already. I mean, just all these poisons and all these burns and all the instant activations from my Ciliac, from Artak, and from Venomage are putting work in. You know, heal reduction is a very non sexy debuff to have in this game. You know, unless you really need it for like Fire Knight or areas like that. Uh, it's sometimes, you know, you're just like, ah, whatever, heal reduction. But I'll tell you what, heal reduction, playing a lot of this champion over the last two days in preparation for today's video, heal reduction on these waves, even in Doom Tower waves, like random Doom Tower waves, having a heal reduction for three turns on a three turn cooldown with that damage mitigation, I, I can't overstate how cool that is, right? There's been so many situations where I'm going against like a really good healer on the other team, like in a Doom Tower wave or whatever. And it's like, oh yeah, you can't, you can't heal ever because I have it on three turn cooldown and I'm faster than you are, right? So it's pretty cool to have. Uh, I like it. And look at this. I blabbed throughout almost the entire, uh, you know, run here. I'll be right back at the dragon. All right, guys, here we are at the dragon. So check this out, man. Check this out. Keep your eyes on Venomage, uh, the star of our show right in the middle, right? So unfortunately, no retaliation there. I was looking for the retaliation procs, right? But we go in there, you'll see already applying the uh, the decrease, the decrease defense, the decrease attack already applied from our attack, I believe. Uh, so going in there again, placing two more poisons. You love it. Now let's start getting the, now the A1, it's going to be A1 time. So I'm not sure, was that a, uh, was that a turn or was it a counterattack? I didn't see real quick. I think it was just a turn. Uh, either way, that's the A1. You can see those instant activations going off. You guys are going to be floored, I think. We'll see. <laughs> At least in the test runs, I was floored. And there's the retaliation. More instant activations. Boom! Beautiful. You guys are going to be floored by the amount of damage that she puts out compared to some of these beasts on the team, right? Like Artak and uh, Mycelliac with the AoE poisons uh, in his own kit and poison activations in his own kit as well, right? So uh, here we go. Good stuff. And keep in mind, like, the debuffs. We're handling all the debuffs as well, she is, right? Venom. Dude, look at this. Wow. Ooh, that's juicy. Uh, 4.2 million damage, dude. I mean, sign me the frig up, dude. Like, what the heck? What a champ. <laughs> New best time. I'll take it. <laughs> so, uh, golly, dude. Now, the same thing. I could sit here and, and run every, almost every dungeon. Any boss that's susceptible, excuse me, to poison. Uh, let me just go to the, the, the highest griffin on Doom Tower hard level. I got another uh, team set up for you guys here. It's an ally attack team because, hey, guess what? Who has, who has amazing synergy on ally attack teams? 
Venomage, because we're getting more of those A1s, thus more instant activations. In a lot of ways, she has like a little bit of a parallel to a Dark Kale, uh, you know, but we also have that all the elements of the debuffing and the, the damage reduction, heal reduction from the, the heal reductions, right? So uh, let me come back to you guys when we get to the Griffin. I'll be right back. All right, guys, here we go, here we go, here we go. All auto, let's see what we can do here. So uh, we have an all epic team, as you guys can see. We go in there with the debuffs right away. That's gonna be fantastic. Obviously, the Griffin does have the cleanse, but we'll get some damage. Plus, when we can activate those uh, those uh, poisons, excuse me, that we're placing there before those debuffs are transferred over, it's even better for us. So here we go, we get that shield, that juicy shield from uh, Miscreated Monster. We have some of my faves on this team, Tagore, Miscreated Monster, Farrakhan the Fat, the Fat Man. I love it, I love it, I love it. So, so far, so good, but this Griffin can hit very hard, and things can escalate very, very fast. This is Doom Tower hard after all, right? So we go in there, we reapply those debuffs, and now you can see that the buff removal and transfer, etc., is going to be happening again, which really, really sucks. Uh, but... You know, that's a good good reason to have maybe a cleanser on this team. Maybe I can put still put in a uh I'm trying to think of who. Who I could put in. Who where I should make a sub to make things a little bit more robust, right? Oh, we need a we need a a, a revive. Right away, Tagore. We need a revive right away. Okay, the revive is on, the shield is up, things have stabilized. Woo-wee! This is a battle, man, this is a battle. It wasn't this close when I ran it in, uh, you know, in pre-production, if you will, but, you know, Tagore saves us. It's all good, it's all good. Woo! All right, our girl dies. I wonder how much damage she's going to have after the death of Ruski. Uh, we will see. Again, nice healage on this team as well. Uh, also damage mitigation on that ally protect. Miscreated monster goes down fast, right? But we get that cleanse from uh, what's-his-face from uh, uh, Urigrim. And now the revival should be back up right now. There it is, rise and fight. Okay, we're going to do this, man. Man, I didn't make this easy, did I? And the star of the show keeps dying, so really not ideal, but can we do this? That's the question. All right, Miss Great, both of our support champions are still alive. We're gonna need a little bit more than just support here. We're gonna need some damage. I think we're two turns away from that revival. Uh, there's one of them. Here comes Miss Created going down. Rise and fight, we do it again! Oh man, oh man. Definitely not a dependable team, but the nice thing is, on Doom Tower, unlike what, every other area in the freaking game, uh, it's one area that we, uh, you know, we don't really worry so much about losses because it doesn't cost energy. Uh, man, wish we had more areas like that. Anyway, we're still going here. We're still going. Barely can we win this fight. Oh, Venno. Venno Mage dies again. Is it going to be a fourth revival? Are we really going to have a fourth revival here? We, we are. This has a lot of ups and downs. It's quite a uh, quite a film. We should make a film based on this run here. Uh, but overall, 618,000 damage. Man, like Venom is just getting the job done there. Just gets a random Griffin team. Hey guys, just in case you're unaware, uh, also, uh, just, you can use this strategy, a team like this, it doesn't have to be, uh, Helicath on this squad, it doesn't have to be Trunda on this squad, right? They're both absolutely 100%, uh, optional. We're just looking for a block damage champion in Helicath, and we're looking for a DPS to help us get through the waves on a Trunda, and that's it in terms of, like, the, uh, their use case on these teams. Obviously, Helicath is important, but you can run champion like Demitha, or even an unkillable champion like Sir Nick, or, or whomever, right? There's a lot of them now in the game. Uh, Alza Gore is another one uh, to keep the damn and keep the team from dying. But basically, what she does on a team like this, Venomage, is she goes in there and she is going to be in charge of the heal reduction and the debuffs on the spider. She can also help out a little bit with damage, but really, where her utility is coming is from that three turn heal reduction on that three turn cooldown in this battle so check this out we're going to go with the block damage again unkillable also works in this regard we're going to come in with the a1 uh with trunda we're going to come in with the aoe attack on even the spiderlings with that heal reduction and then every we have geomancer on the team right so every single attack that comes in once as soon as he gets his uh his hp burn down every single attack is going to do a massive amount of damage right we can't die the, and the spider can't heal because of that heal reduction, right? Isn't that beautiful? 
Isn't it beautiful, right? It's like the easiest way to deal with one of the more annoying bosses in Nether Spider. Every single hit, we don't want to kill the Spiderling, so we're going to go right in the A1 with Helicath. He hits too hard, but we will go with the AoE on, on uh, Geomancer. Now, the cool thing is, is the harder this gets with his strategy, the, the higher the level, right, of the, of the Doom Tower floor against the Nether Spider is going to be the easier this strategy will get, believe it or not. Uh, so no poisons there on the A1, so we'll just go in with the A2 instead. Uh... Reason being is there's going to be more HP on these spiderlings to keep them alive longer, thus more opportunity to get those HP burn ticks, right? So this strategy, the higher we go, the easier it is or the faster the run is, the less tur least turns that I need to pull this sort of a run off. But as you guys can see, this, this uh, strategy is only viable with that heal reduction up there all the time. So guys, Venom Age, I love her. Do you love her? What a champion, guys. What a champion. Shame on me for sleeping on Venom Age. All these areas and more. Demon Spawn. I mean, Demon, Demon Spawn. What? What? Demon Lord. Uh, fantastic as well. Hopefully you've enjoyed this guide. Now we have an updated guide on Venom Age. Much love, guys. Thank you for watching all the way till the end. And as always, take care.